All right. Matt, Hello, Matt. everybody. Jack Olmsted, Port Townsend Pickleball. I'm joined today with Claudia Fontana. She's in Independence, Ohio, and I'm in Port Townsend, Washington. How's the weather today, Claudia, in Independence, Ohio? In Independence, it's very sunny outside, but it's starting to cool off. We're expecting the big uh, northern chill from Canada this coming week up. So we're preparing for cool weather, some moisture, and possibly some of that wet stuff called snow. Yeah, we're in uh, the 40s, like 43. What's the temperature there? Are you in? Uh, it's, it's, oh, yeah, no, we're not. I'm in, inside. I am because I keep it at 68. But no, it's it's about 48 degrees out right now. Probably. I'm trying to guess. Yeah, I guess it was about 40s. So it's 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 a little chilled. But, Today, yeah. we are going to go through the gold medal match. That happened at Nationals 2017, just a couple of weeks ago. This will be the mixed double 65 plus 5.0 match between Yvonne Hackenberg and her husband, Jim Hackenberg, Marsha Frejo, and Mark Friedenberg. And uh, you've been through this uh, once or twice, uh, Claudia. Um, what, what we're doing now? What do you mean? What the, the the match? Oh, the match. A couple times I've gone through the match and I've taken on a couple little sections as we'll we'll see here. Um, but uh, we're looking at some of the wonderful top players here, and I got some pointers to for people to kind of just pay attention to as they as they look through it. Um, Yvonne and Jim Hackenberg are from Michigan area. I just absolutely adore this couple because they, uh, I, I know them personally uh, from uh, from my region, from the Great Lakes region, and uh, they're one of the few married couples out there that play really well together and get along. It's it's so cool. They're always, you know, reaching out to give each other a five or touch their hand, like, good job, that kind of thing. Marsha, I know a little of. I met her a few times. Mark, I, I'm not familiar with him personally, but um, I, I he, just watching him play, it, it's, it's a treat to watch these uh, upper-level uh, senior players move around the court. I hope to be moving <laughs> remotely like them when I'm 65-plus. Yeah, so um, we want to give a shout out to Pickleball Channel. Uh, yep. Thank you very much, Pickleball Channel, for letting us use your uh, uh, production. You guys have great production values. That's why we want to use it. Uh, you got multiple camera angles. You re really go the extra mile. And the sponsors, the, the sponsor that um, helps pickleball channel and that is uh, Highlands leg cramps and you can see that on your screen and here we are can you see the the game yep. Marsha and Marsha oh, yeah. Claudia no yes I can yeah you can. yeah we have uh, Marsha in the black shirt and Mark in the yellow on the left and we have Yvonne and Jim Hackenberg on the right that's Jim there and he's a Team Onyx, and it looks like Yvonne is a uh, Paddle Tech. So I guess they're sponsored by two different companies. Blessings to them. Yeah, Jim and Jim and Yvonne, they're our tournament directors. Jim is over at the Great Lakes Regional. So uh, that'll be coming up next July. They had a very successful, he runs a great tournament up uh, at the Great Lakes. So that play right there is what we're going to be talking about in a few minutes here. Uh, we can go uh, back here. Why don't we, we go back to the editing keys? keys. Um, I'm going to share my, my screen with you if that's okay. Oh, you're going to share your screen with us. Let me, okay. Before we even get to this play, before we even get to this, because that's it, that's kind of exciting. Um, I thought we'd go through um, a little bit about the, um, the serve. And do you mind if I share right now? No, go right ahead. So um, we're going to look at uh, a little bit of the serve and the third shot return ready position. Just a little breakdown. So I kind of took this video and I said, let's, and I know you've been working a lot on uh, serve as you've been doing some of your um, 
critiques and analysis um, in the past couple of weeks. So I said, you know, let's go with that. And uh, I, I thought this, let's, let's take a peek. So if we look at, um, let's see, make sure I got the right one. So I'm, I took both of these ladies, I believe it's like either their first or second serves of the game and th things that we're going to be looking at as we point this out, um, just comparing the two players and the similarities and differences, we can see um, in, in first, you know, the, the ready position phase one, the backswing. I mean, they both have a nice backswing. Um, they're, they're, they're dropping the ball, their, their weight transfer they have their weight on their back foot you know some people you know stand still when they serve some people do back backhand it looks like the ball is high at their waist but by the time it 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 um goes into position it at ball contact as it drops we see that the ball is is below their waistline that those red lines uh right across their waist you can see that where the ball is on the arrow this lower part here for um, Yvonne, you can see that the ball is at her knees and she, she has her shoulders facing target, which would be the net. And we have Marsha, she's a little bit more open to some degree in her stance, but her ball contact is below her waist. It's between her knees and her, her waist, which is a great place to be. And the difference in uh, the swing path. Now they both have a swing path. They're both, you know, coming underhand. But if we look at Marsha here on our right, um, Marsha's got a little bit of a, a kink in her elbow. So she's kind of got a little bit of a side kink in her um uh, or cock in her wrist because she may be looking as we'll, we'll see later in the next slides. Um, she makes contact below the waist and then she'll finish over kind of with a little rollover with a um, top spin attempt on that shot. Where Yvonne on the left here, we see the uh, contact of the ball and the swing path is more of a bowling like uh, underhand swing, more traditional, but the contact below the waist and she just follows through. So as we look at the follow through in both of them, we can see in Marsha here, we see that her arm is straight and you, I know you can't see too well in this blurred picture, but the paddle is turned over. So the um, the paddle and the hand finish is actually pointing to target. In hers, it's very dramatic. In Marsha and Yvonne, it's not so dramatic, but it's still, it's finished. It's followed through. It's going to target. Um, she just has a little bit, Yvonne has a little bit more bend in the elbow. Nothing wrong with either one of those. Um, as we look at uh, the finish here, Marsha's rotated paddle, Yvonne's finish slightly less extended, but the weight transfer, absolutely the same. Marsha's transferred foot forward. The only thing difference here is Marsha's pretty tall. Notice how she's like up on, almost up on her toes here. I mean, you lose power to some degree if you're trying to put power on any type, any type of shot from a serve to a um, uh, uh, a ground stroke. Once your, especially your center of gravity, once your center of gravity comes up off the ground, our power source being our power source, our, our trunk session starts to lose power. So then becomes the power now comes from our shoulders rather than from our legs. So she's up on her toes here um, with um, a tall finish. In in contrast, we have Yvonne, who's a little bit more in that, not in, again, no disrespect to either one or to Marsha be, being in the taller position, the ball gets over the net, it's in play, that's all good. Where Yvonne is a little bit more compressed, uh, transfer uh, foot is, you know, weight is transferred forward, but she is now ready to go into that ready position a lot faster than we see Marsha. Um, again, age, all of these things take factor two, but these are top level players are 5-0 in the 65 plus. So in their gold medal match, so nothing is taken away from any of them. But now we look at their, they finished their shot. The ball has left their paddles and here's Marsha. I, I think the, no, yeah, the ball has left both of them. Now they're like, okay, ball's gone. What am I doing? Eyes are now ready. They're looking for the service return. Paddles are up and ready. We see Yvonne here in a little bit more this crouched ready position. This is a 
you know, totally traditional position here. Her paddle's up, but she's waiting. She's looking for the ball. Her weight transfer is split in a split step, solid, ready position, ready to go. Where we see Marsha, same thing. She's, you know, looking at her target, uh, tall stance less effective for a drop return because if you're standing tall and you want to drop the ball not that it won't it'll just be a little bit tougher because now your paddle is far away from you and you're not going to get that lift out of your legs because you're standing tall but it's possible again it's not like the, the deal breaker here weight transfer she's now into her split step so with that phases we see the backswing they're making contact with the ball they're following through and they're getting in a ready position so let's uh let's take it a little bit here jack i'm gonna give it back to you wait, wait can we go to that first slide because i want to talk to you about the toss sure, sure. there are two different schools of, of thought here one is the drop toss and the one is the i i don't know it's a it's not a drop toss it's just a drop and then a toss. It's like right. an overhand, underhand type of a thing. Right. Some what do you feel is more effective? I am in the camp that uh, is really advocating uh, an actual toss uh, because the, the dropping of the ball, I just think you're, you're chasing the ball too much. You're not giving yourself much time. Okay, good question. Great question. You know what? And I'm I'm just gonna say very simply, it's all preference. Um, if to me, I'm a dropper. I I, I come from the thought of badminton, where my 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 racket, my paddle is right next to my my ball, and I'm my paddle is. I don't have a huge backswing. It's probably at my hip. So when if you were to look at, um, oops back to the slide here hang on a second um these ladies their hand is high they're not tossing they're just letting the ball go and it's dropping and you'll see that when you put put the um game in motion they're pretty much just dropping the ball from waist high letting it drop and then making contact as the ball drops so the only thing i don't or I'm, I'm just gonna wanna say I'm to be cautious with, with a toss, a toss is up. I mean, a, an actual, if you're tossing, a toss should go up. So if you're tossing it up, you're waiting for the ball to come down below your waist and then timing. Nothing wrong with it, it works. If it works for you, as long as it's below the waist, you're legal and you know, you've worked on that and everybody works on that in timing. I've got people who literally, Jack, I mean, they are bent over. Their head is like way down here, equal to their hips, and their hand is below their knee and their paddle is below their knee because they need to make sure that their ball is low because they can't find the, the position. And it's almost awkward looking. It's like they look like they're at a football game, you know, ready to set hike, you know, <laughs> in a three-point stance. Um, but for them, that works for them to keep it, to keep the ball low and, and over the net. So drop or toss, you know, it's a toss up, <laughs> literally. It's like a potato and a patata type of a situation in your exactly. mind. Exactly. As long as your backswing is timed, your face of your paddle is, is at, con at, you know, is your contact point and, and the ball is going to its target in its follow through. So because you are a dropper and not a tosser, when you uh, coach people, do you coach them with a, a drop instead of a toss? Well, when I teach and coach, I always make, you know, I evaluate them from the beginning. I mean, I say, I, you know, I'll say, hey, you know, toss, you know, or not toss, serve some. And then I evaluate what they have. And if it's, if it's working for them, I'm the type of coach that's not going to change you dramatically. I'll work with what seems to be comfortable with you. Um, I can change you if you want to, <laughs> um, but I try to work within what's comfortable for you. If it's totally outrageous and you're totally having a bad time, then it's just like, hey, listen, Jane, let's try this. You know, this is, doesn't seem to be working for you. Let's try you know, this, that, and the other thing. Um, 
But I found when I was uh, teaching PE and I was teaching badminton, and badminton is very similar. It's out of hand, you know, either backhand, forehand. In badminton, it's maybe a little bit more flicky. But it's interesting how many people can hit um, – how many people can hit a, a moving object, but when it's coming out of their hand, they will swing and miss unbelievably many times. I mean, because when they're they're sw when they drop, they're 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 matched up. It's hard to explain to you. Let me see if I can hang on a second. Let me. When I don't have my paddle with me. Where's my paddle? Oh, here I have an old paddle. <laughs> Oh, this guy, go away. Um, if you see my hand here? Yes. Okay. What they do is they'll have they'll have the ball. I'm going to fake my ball here. Okay. They have their ball here, and their, their elbow is all bent up like this. But as soon as they drop the ball out and they make their backswing, they drop, the, they straighten out their arm, and then they swing, and they totally miss because the paddle now has changed – and they miss because they come here and they go back to swing and then they straighten out their arm and they totally miss because the, the ball is here. So I, you know, teach like right in here, keep it in here. You, if you're going to keep your elbow bent, you better always keep it bent because if you straighten it out, you are now below the ball. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. You're here and then you go to swing and now you're below the ball is my fake ball. <laughs> That's an interesting fake ball. Did you make that? Yeah, it's an embroidered. It's an embroidered. I'm making coasters, trying some new things out. So when they when they go to drop, they better swing quickly to hit the ball. Otherwise, if they they drop the ball and put their arm back, they're gonna. If they don't time it right, it's. It's going to be all messed up. They're going to totally miss. See my paddle? See this cool paddle? This, yeah. show, this shows direct. This is an old one with way back when, when they were allowed to have holes in them. But um, I use this as a directional. I said, because so when you hit the ball like this, that's where the ball goes. It's amazing how many people don't realize. <laughs> they go, oh, really? It's like, yeah, if you hit with an open paddle, that's where your ball's going to go. <laughs> if you hit with your paddle down, that's where the ball's going to go. But um, so it's just one of my little teaching tools. But anyways, back to um, what we were talking about over here with the um, with the share screen. Hang on a second. Um, so drop or toss, you know, that's all preference, you know, as long as you're below the waist and you're legal. But a lot of people with tosses and I have a, I have several people in my my group here. See where Marsha is here. It almost looks like she's going to be above her waist. But by the time she finishes, her swing plane comes down, so she's legal. She's getting behind the ball, but then she finishes, and she has turned the paddle over, so she's got a little bit of a, you know, a little bit of a tops in trying to keep that ball low. Where um, Yvonne is under the ball, she's just putting, making sure that that ball is in play, and it's more effective. So let's let's take a look at some live video from the beginning there, and. Um, I, I think actually it's the first video that I, uh, the first serve that I took um, Marsha's serve from and maybe this second. So if you can go back just a pinch, oh, you want me to go back to right, the, right at the beginning of the game. It should, yeah. Just to, to show, oh, keep going, keep going. Yeah, you got to go, you got to go back to like. Uh, well, I'm well, 45, 45 seconds. seconds. And for some reason, reason, we're getting, we're getting feedback. feedback. Oh, can, can you drag it back? I right, right there. Just take it right there. 14 seconds. Okay, right after the there right here. Okay, so and and then we watch here. Everybody's got a pregame routine, you know, bouncing the ball, hugging it, whatever they want to do. <laughs> they they have a pregame routine, so. Here, there's her backswing, and there's her finish. See how she finishes over, and she's putting that ball deep and freeze it here. See now, a couple things going on here as we're going. We saw that um, 
uh, Yvonne receives the ball. She receives the ball. Look what she's doing. She's She put that ball deep back to the serving team. Now she's moving forward to match her partner, Jim, at the line. And Marsha now is back. And freeze. Half a second. Freeze. Now, Marsha served the ball. And if we go back, go back maybe two clicks, please. So she served the ball. Yvonne's returning it. And Marsha's still standing up. I mean, she's like, okay, just hit me the ball. So now, you know, Yvonne's giving her a purposeful hit, putting it to her forehand. I'm assuming that's where she wanted to put it. But she puts it to her, her forehand and her ready position. She's in, you know, she's not low. She's standing tall. I'm talking about Marsha. She's low, not, or she's standing tall, not too low. So if she had to move left or right, being tall is not going to get you there quickly. Being in a crouched position a little lower will help her move left and right. But again, this is 65 years old. Um, mobility, she still moves pretty darn good for 65. I hope to be moving that fast. So anyway, she returns to serve. You can click forward. She returns to serve. Play it out. But look where it's look where that ball lands. Freeze. That wasn't a drop. I mean, she hit that ball. Deep. Oh, this is. Oh, I went back. You're fine. Play. You're good. So she serves. Here's the return. The second shot. Here's our third shot. Third shot is coming up and freeze. That's that's not a drop shot. So, couple things here. Now look where where's Marsha? Freeze it. Just right there. Just freeze. Thank you. Marsha hit the ball. She didn't drop it. Her partner's now halfway up. And I'm not saying this is bad because we don't know what the outcome is going to be. Her partner's starting to move up. Marsha's not even in the, in the picture yet. She's not equal to her partner. Her shot is deeper. So Yvonne is, is kind of at midcourt in the, in the B zone, right in the midcourt. So she's got room if she wanted to at this point. She's got room to the net to really hit it hard if she wanted to. Let's see how this plays out. She puts it up. Now Marsha's there. And now we're into a dink game maybe. Oh, look at that up. And now we're going to start a dink game. Nope, it's going to be a volley game. Look at how she's trying to catch Jim off guard there. And freeze a moment. Freeze. Okay, so if you go back, can you go back five seconds or go back five, six seconds. right there? Five seconds. That, that's good right there. That's fine. But so instead of a dink game, they're already into a frenzy. They're already into a fight. Now we got Yvonne. She's ready to go. She's playing. I mean, if you notice at the, at the mixes at this 5-0 level, the men play about 70 percent of the court, if not more, um, assuming that the women, you know, are getting the dinks, not always, but um, the men seem to, to take more advantage of more court play, but that can get them into trouble, and we'll point out later. Uh, so look how tall Marsha is here. She's very tall, which is fine, but her, by being tall, her lever, meaning her um, arm is is shorter now. So now she's not going to be able to get power on that shot like she'd like. She's got to flick it a little bit more. So let's play it out. She's aiming it at Je or at um, Jim. So she's she now she's tall. She's standing up. Look how Jim is down. He's ready. He could now he he has to he's he's still coiled there. He's able to get some power. He's keeping the ball low. It's lower to the net. It's about 16 inches off. the. Now look at freeze there. Look how unbalanced Marsha is. See that? She's all unbalanced. Her, her weight is going backwards at her hips, center of gravity. Her legs are straight. 
what's going to happen? It's going to hit the net and drop. So she lost balance in her setup. Let's just play it out. Let's keep going here. And um, well, you can really hear my keystroke. Yeah, that's okay. Let me, so let's play. Turn off my audio. I need to turn off my audio so you don't hear that. And I, I get excited about this stuff. So if I start talking too much, let me know. So there's Yvonne's serve. There's a good serve there. Marsha's return. And she's low. Notice how Yvonne, let's keep playing, just keep playing. But let's watch Yvonne and Jim's ready positions. Look how they're low, they're square, they're set. The other team is standing up a lot. I mean, they're tall. I just want to say tall. I don't want to say that they're not in, they're not in a good position. They're just taller than I would like to see them. Now see Marsha's down low. She's got to lift it up because she's tall. The, her paddle's down low. Oh, there's our shot. Let's freeze that there. Okay. Let's I'm going to share my screen on this one, okay? We're going to replay or actually go back and let's replay that point and then I'll share my screen with you and we'll take it real slow. Let's, I'll show you exactly what I, I want people to watch. So here it comes. This is a fun point. I mean, this is low, the, the everybody's all excited. Okay, play it out. And here's a beautiful serve. Keeps it in play. It's deep but it's in play, return, Marsha, come on up, come on up, Marsha. And here's a drop shot maybe, yeah, no, a little, little high. So Jim and Nevada are sort of pinned right now. They're pinned back a little bit. They're trying to regain net position. And if they don't get a good drop in there soon, they're not going to get to that net. So here it comes. And look at that. Oh, it's going. <laughs> okay. Keep going. Keep going. And stop. Okay. So I'm going to share my screen with you for a moment. Okay. So we're looking. This is, re <laughs> this is uh, what I'm calling reaction to the hanging Chad. Remember the hanging Chads? Okay, so the ball is hit and it's just hanging on the wire. So I want you to watch how the ball hangs. Watch the intensity of the team on the left. Watch how quick and agile and explosive Jim is in the anticipation of that ball dropping on his side of the as a possible drop to his side. He is actively ready to go. And this is what I get excited about because there are so many people, they see the ball close being close to the net or hitting close to the net being it hitting the net or not and they just stand there like they're waiting for it to bounce in the kitchen and then react where jim is anticipating this shot so let's look at what i broke down here so we have the ball so we have the ball here just hitting the net we have Mark. Look at this ready position. He puts that ball. Up. Both both of them on the left side. They're both in ready position. Mark is nice and low. Look how tall Marsha is here. Okay. And we've got Levon starting to come in. We got Jim thinking, oh, that ball's going to come up. So he's kind of stunned in this oh, back up position. So the next, oops, the next section here, the bottom slide. Um, the ball is still hanging. It's still hanging, but you can see their feet are moving. Jim's feet are, are now square, and we move into the next shot. The ball is just starting to tip back over. Now, Marsha's like on her toes, like, oh my gosh, what's it going to do? And then Mark's like, uh-oh, what's happening? His paddle's still out in front of him. But look what Jim's doing. He's like, is that ball coming? Here it comes. 
He's moving to the line. He's moving to that net. And now the ball starts to fall back over the net. But Jim's still moving forward. Look at that nice position by Yvonne. She's got her feet square. And these two on this side on the left are like, oh, darn it. <laughs> and then the frustration of watching the ball move in slow motion as it's getting lower. But look at Jim. He's running all the way up to that net. Poor Mark. He's dropped his paddle. He's like, oh, I can't believe it just happened. But Jim, I'm so excited about this. Jim is at that net. If that ball would have dropped on his side, he would have been there. He would have been there. So that I thought that was a fun point. I know we haven't gotten very far in this, but that was a fun point. What do you think about that? Are you there, Jack? Well, I have to unmute my mic. <laughs> and when I do that, I hear a lot of static. Oh, I get it. For some reason, you've got speakers on. Oh, I got my mic. You know what? I Okay. I don't know. My mic is working here, but my, my speakers aren't working. My headphone. You're coming through my... Uh, right. Uh, for some reason, that's not clicking, so... That's, that's why I hear my phone. I hear feedback. So I turn off my mic. Oh. So you don't hear me clicking the keyboard. Okay. And you Sorry don't hear the feedback. I don't know why it's not coming through my headset here. All right. So, you know what? Let's just let's just fly through some of this so we can just keep watching the game. And if you feel like we can stop something, we can go from there. But otherwise, that's uh, those are just some of my highlights I thought were fun to in, in that particular uh, um, section there is uh, watching that um, those balls just kind of hang down there. Hanging on. But I, I was just like, go, Jim, go. <laughs> All right, back to the game. Things that, that I, I that interest me at this 5-0 level with the mixes, um, and even with stronger players, Jack, is that – Again, like I said before, the men have a tendency to play, you know, uh, 60 to 70 percent, sometimes more in some cases of, of the um, of the court. Um, you know, I, I guess it's just the nature of the beast that most of the women are getting the um, the dinks. I mean, it naturally men are, are stronger. There's nothing, you know, new about that. But um but things that happen right here, I mean, look at the left, look at Jim's left there. Now, granted, he makes a great shot there. I'm always thinking if some people, if they return the shot, if the other team's returning the shot with purpose and with direction, look at all of that left side of that court on Jim's side here. I mean, it's all open, but he makes a great shot. It's an over-the-head power slam, so no problem there for him. So we can just keep, you can just keep going through. And um, somewhere around, uh, what? where are you at there? You're at. Yeah, we, we're not. Yeah, keep going. Go to about the two and a half minute or two and a half minute mark. It, it, there's some fun stuff going on there. The two twenty mark. But see how you know, again, you know. Oh, that one he poached. He pulled. He he pulled over and he he got slightly burned there. But um, see how he comes way over to the other side. Mark coming over to the other side there. Return. He's moving up. Looks great. Where's the drop shot? They've got him pinned back. 
Martian has a slight tendency to put the ball a lot higher than would be um, w that we would like to like it to have, you know, because too high. If you put that ball in that high, you know, forty inches up, it, it's slammable from waist high. And then when she does go down, when she does go down to get a, a ball, um, the the tendency is for that elephant trunk to drop, and then the ball pops up out of off her paddle. Notice that they're all stacking here too, keeping the the guy into the more power position beforehand. We got here. So let's play. How about play at some regular speed? This one, she's going to pop up, I think, here. Oh, no, I was wrong. Play. Yvonne had a couple of them in the net cross court ones. But whoa, look at that. Free. Look at that. What was that about? I mean, I, I don't always agree with that. So here, she gives it to Marsha and freeze right there. Freeze. He comes all the way over. Is this, you know, my question here, freeze that. My question here is, is he not trusting his partner that he's got to come all the way from the other side of the court to make this play? Now, even with that, I don't know. I don't have the audio on. Is he yelling switch? The ball goes out either way. Gives it to Marsha. I mean, I, I'm... If you're going to do that, if you're going to poach and on me, you better put that ball in play. But you're, you're coming into, you know, I if I'm a five, if I'm playing 5-0, I don't know, this is me personally. <laughs> if I'm playing 5-0, which I don't, um, it, I would hope that my partner has the trust that I'm going to get to that ball. I don't know. Your thoughts? I've got my mic turned off. Now it's on. Yeah, go ahead. What do you think about that? What are your thoughts on that? About, what about, I think. about you know, about the over poaching um, and, and leaving court space open sometimes. Um, I just think it's like, I, I, I would hope if I had the skill and I see Jim poaching over here on to the right, look at how he, I mean, that's fine, but he's way over to the right watch this shot there there's a it's like oh and then he got burned up the middle unfortunately i think in that play he was thinking that uh, mark was going to take the forehand and marcia came back with a backhand and kind of took him by surprise in that but uh but these are, these are, I mean, these are good players. This is a, a good game. Look how he comes. Okay, freeze that there. See how he, that was a, a lob from Marsha, I believe it was. And, and Jim's coming all the way over to that side of the court, which is great, which is what he should be doing. But his, there should be a switch going on here just in case it is in. Because if he brings it back, is he going to be able to get all the way back to the left side of the court? His partner should be doing what? His partner should be moving to the left and back. But she probably may have thought, hey, it's going out. She already had a line on it that it was going out. But uh, good recovery by Jim covering all that court over there. That's a lot. That's a long way to go. Deep serve backhand. Um, back. What what time do you have on uh, the video there? Six thirty-six. Okay. And my dog Jojo. She wants to come and say hi. Thank you. Okay. No, you have to get that. You can't be in my face the whole time.
I, I notice sometimes uh, with Marsha, not a lot, but if she gets maybe impatient on some of her uh, on some of her game, she'll start to um, uh, you know like pop lob at the at the line and try to lob it over. And sometimes it doesn't make it, and then there's Jim just waiting there for the slam. So yeah, that, I, oh, go ahead. With that shot right there, Jim. Whoops. Right here. Look where he's he at. Mark. Yeah. If, if Mark could get out of the way, that would go out. It's going out. But he can't. So Jim is basically hitting a sitting duck. Right. And that's probably what you get when you're over 65. You can't move that well. So it's like, okay, I'm just going to hit the body of my opponent. You know, forget hitting at the legs. I'm just going to hit the hit the person. And that's what he does here. Yeah, you target him or what they call tagging, right? And I think that's what Mark was talking about. It's like, hey, you hit me. <laughs> Even throws his arm out at him. What I like about Mark's serve it's a serve that I've really been advocating, this thing with the pendulum, where it starts high, it just comes down with a straight arm and hit the ball. Mm -hmm. Watch watch Mark serve. Whoops, not that time. Not that one. That was got a kink in it. That, that was that that had some spin on it. That's a whole different animal. But we'll have to just watching that, that. just while you're watching that though, that's a clue that's a a clue to the other team if i mean you are at you know you say he's got a pendulum as soon as you see that you don't see that pendulum coming in you're already get you know saying it doesn't look like the pendulum something else is going to come at me so you're already starting to clue into this is going to be a spin before he even hits the ball so now your brain can adjust to the type of hit and return you're going to have right was that in um, I don't know. Yeah, it was. That was in. That was in. Oh, and see, Jim doesn't think so. But if you take a look at the replay here, I mean, it's just on that back line. Uh, it's right. Boom, boom, boom. Right. It hit right there. It hit inside the line. Uh, uh, that was so close. That could have gone either way, I suppose. But that was that was a tight line jim's like oh my god oh, 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 oh and let's see but see how they're like they're always you know hey it's all right touch each other's hands calm down four two in the game they're still winning now now marsh is just marsh is not doing too well on her third shot drops here no, she's right into them. she's either hanging them or right in the net She's it's like not, perfect put away for Jim. Yeah, she's she's off balance. She's standing up. Let's see if Mark hits it, does his pendulum. Let's see. Serve. Yeah, he throws his arm way up high. It looks like he's going to come to an – he's going to come uh, – he's got a spin on this one. Yeah, he's got spin. That's not his pendulum. He's trying to make something happen. They're behind. He's trying, you know, I'm just speculating. They're behind. Let's let's see if I can make something happen. But it's 4 2. It's been 4 2 forever. Yeah. He's trying to make something happen. Let's get going. Let's. Well, look at that. Talk about let's make something happen. He is totally encroaching on Marsh's space on this point. Yeah. Right here. Uh, 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 uh. That's going, that's, that's going to her forehand. That's not going to her backhand. Right. And he pushes himself all the way over to the court. Uh, you know, how is this going to turn out? Uh, Jim just got a little bit over anxious there. Yeah. We're going to watch that again. And and that ball it had nothing, nothing on it. Nothing. Mark, Mark put back at him. <coughs> Excuse me. Right in the middle of the court. And right I think uh, what happened with Jim is like, oh, my God. It's exactly where I want it, and he just got, uh, you know, it went got off. the best of him. Got the best of one out of bounds. Like, oh, crumbs. He had it. He had it. Look, it's still 4-2. They're not in bad shape. They've been no. going forever no. here. 
And there hits it into Marsh's backhand. But like I say, and, and again, nothing disrespectful. It's low. Marsha's tall. She's a very tall lady. So if she isn't crouched under to get under that ball at the Novale zone line, she's got a, I mean, her paddle's going to be tall and she's got to do a lot of, you know, English got to put stuff on that ball to make it get up and over the net. Yeah, but look at her position right here. She is out of position. She is hitting that ball kind of behind her. It's not in front of her. Well, yeah, it's, it's almost past her back hip. I mean, almost past her back hip, and she's just kind of like going to have to flick her wrist a little bit. Correct. But absolutely. She didn't, to bring it back but over. actually, she, actually, she didn't flick her wrist. It's, she got, it's just a she conventional. Had she had speed. She had arm speed coming through. Where's the ball going? And that's that's a great position too. Let's see, where's it going to go? It was it was high. It went high. Let's see. She she hits it high. We're going to watch that again. Here it goes. Doom. And she just hits it high. Wow. And that, that's probably because she didn't move her feet and she didn't get in position to get the ball. Correct. I mean, I that's, that's why getting set before the it, ball gets to you is so important. So that gives yourself some time in order to get the ball. Yes. To where your opponent's aren't or close to the net or it gives you more time to figure out what you're going to do with it oh, again that's too high too high yeah, she's having she's having trouble keeping the ball low today on this particular match yeah that's just good see, look oh that was go back go back go back go back i could go back i know you can <laughs> i just got excited i i'll go slow I'll slow it down so freeze there Okay, I'm frozen. Yeah, you're. It's moving. You know. I'm going backwards. You want me to go forward? Go backwards, just a little bit more. I mean, these guys are off balance now. They've got them off balance. Okay. See on that one, she's behind. The ball's behind her when she's hitting. It's not in front of her. Her paddle is. She's. You know, she should be not. I mean, they won the point. And granted, they won the point. It's like, oh, well, they won the point. Big deal. Well, it's. You want to try to be in the best position as possible. And I know the game moves quickly, but training, I was just talking to one of my players today, um, working with an exercise band on, um, you know, speed control. You, you hook an exercise band to, a, to a, um, something that's, you know, high, and, and you just move quickly. Boom, 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 boom. So you're working on endurance, and you're doing twists, you know, with medicine balls or exercise band, because we want to train those muscles to get back into position quickly. Um, but most people don't do that kind of stuff. I mean, very few, you know, dedicated players are going to be doing exercises or plyometrics or things that are going to get them into great, you know, physical condition. Um, I know, uh, like Sarah Ansbury was talking how she was not, working out and her game showed and then she got back into it and you know her game picks up if you, if you want to be a top level athlete at any sport you have to condition you have to practice drill 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 otherwise you know you, the game just stays the same all the time look at that how she's way over she didn't move her feet well look at how he's off balance there but he's getting it See, they're on the defense on the left side here. There's just oh, there's another one right at him. But it, he uh, was but able to. But he touched him and didn't touch him. And went out. He got out of the way. He got dodge the ball. <laughs> he dodged the ball. That's called the Matrix. You know you. Oh, the Matrix. There you go. <laughs> the Matrix move where you got why bend over and <laughs> big swing there. Well, that's the that's, that's kind of like the pendulum. pendulum serve here where he gets his paddle all the way back all really? the way back right here right here and then just moves it down and he's trying to put power on that shot he's putting power on that shot where's the drop not bad resetting backhand nice actually there was a section way earlier i can't tell you where but mark it was it was like poetry i call it you know i playing army he the ball kept coming to him and he hit it to the left he hit it to the right left right left right and he had 
he had uh, Jiminy Vaughn a little bit all over the place and just waiting for his spot to open, to put away. Oh, she cut that one. Let's see what happened there. I hear Jim serve. And they got them. Oh, they're on the attack. Oh, goal by well, that's that's a classic no. That is a classic no. Where's he's the classic no? He's running. Okay, watch. He's running and hitting and in the net. <laughs> yeah, running, running and hitting. That is a recipe for disaster. That's what I always say. You got to stop and hit. Yeah, you can do it. I'm not. We're not saying that. It doesn't work. Certainly does work. But if you want a, a the best accurate shot, yeah. Well, a higher percentage, a higher percentage higher. shot. And if you got two moving parts, especially if you're a beginner, intermediate player, you really got to train yourself to Stop. get stationary, watch the ball, and then swing at the ball. To hit the ball and run at the same time, you're going to find that your balls are going into the net or out of the court. Because you have no control, you don't have the control. No. But, I, but at this level, uh, they can get away f with it most of the time. Jim wasn't able to get away with it that time. Not that time. You're right. You're right. No, I mean, the, the, the mantra of stop, hit. Uh, yeah. there, there's, there's something that, that was drives, a great you, shot. <laughs> drives you nuts. Ah! That's a. Ah, ah, you might as well throw his paddle away. Oh, my God. It's the paddle. I know it's a paddle. Two things there. It's greed. He's like, oh, it's up. I'm going to smash it. But he was off balance either way. He was off balance. He had no chance of making a really good, a really strong shot on that. See that? He's, he's all discombobulated. Yeah. He, he went back. He's thinking, okay, I'm going to reserve this, get the serve. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm not going to get the serve. Oh, he's still thinking about it. He's still Bounded thinking about panel. it. He's found in his ah, pants. That's right. He's still thinking about it. So, so he's got to get out of his head. So... So he's already, he's in his own head right now. He is in his own head right now. And he's going to try, he's going to start overplaying. Uh, see? Oh, they're both. Well, they're down 9 4 now. Yeah. And these guys are just marching. And they're, um, they're calm. They're staying calm. They're right. all encouraging each other. They're encouraging, and I know you don't have the audio up, but I know if people watch this on uh, the Pickleball Channel live or you know in review, you'll hear them talking. Take it, mine. You'll hear them talking to each other. There they are, touching. Hey, good shot. It's okay, or whatever they're saying. Or hey, stay up. Well, there's a link to this original video in the description below, um, the, the this YouTube video. Mm -hmm. So if you want to go watch this entirety, just go to, to the description. There's a link right at the top. Just click on it, and you can go watch it without us talking about it. It's more fun to listen to us evaluate and analyze. Well, yeah, and you can also use the editing keys, the YouTube editing keys, yeah. to slow it down, to, to go fast forward, to stop it, so that you can really see the details on how these points are constructed and, and and by doing that, Jack, I mean, I, I encourage people to do that. I encourage people to go, if they're watching videos, become that student already. In the net. You know, become the student of the game. Don't just go out and play and expect to have things happen. If you're not drilling and if you're not, I mean, one, you can watch a game. Great. But to be able to stop it now with the, you know, the, the, the space bar, you can stop it, right? You know, and and go back a few seconds with the back key just to see what did they do how did they see, do that see with this with this thing right here with mark's serve look how high he throws his ball up in the air and look how much air he's he's got and it just comes down well, because he's got that big swing he's got to yeah. time it yeah absolutely and uh -oh. mark is just trying to will it yeah he just wants to power power this thing yeah he's, he's he's overplaying at this point and you know what if you're gonna play doubles in my this is 
Claudia's opinion. If you're going to play doubles and you're behind, you know, you, you, you gotta have trust in your partner. I mean, why did you pick them as your partner? Um, see, see that, that was a, th a third shot drive that Marsha did. Mm -hmm. He gets it right to her. She just takes it back, which yeah. means now you're up there. It's a third shot right at the heels. And so that, that real fast ball, and then that slow ball, kind of gets people uh their brains they just can't handle it sometimes yeah that's why they do it you hit it fast and then you hit it soft you don't keep hitting you just don't keep hitting it hard hard you hit it hard you hit it soft changing and pace that, absolutely that, changing pace of the ball i mean one of the besides the drop shot being you know effective to keep people's paddles below the net so they can't slam it at you being able to change pace, as you said, change, taking pace off the ball, putting pace on the ball at will, you know, rather than a drive all the time, an off-speed shot or a shot with backspin, you know, it, it changes the, the, the pace of the ball. It gets people off balance. And and that's, oh, look at the games up here. We got 9-8. That's right. The Getting serious back. now. He's like, okay, maybe we have a chance at this. Well, maybe they can get to even. In the net. Oh. In the net. That's that's what drives you crazy right there. And but look at her position look, again. Look at her position. She's closed yeah. position. She's freeze right there. Oh. Whoops. Here, okay. we'll freeze here. That's okay. She's free. Was that, is that the shot? Yeah, this is the shot. Here, I'm going to go frame by frame here. And freeze there. Look how off bat. I mean, the ball now is low. She she is reaching. She's reaching for that ball rather than just kind of lifting it. She's reaching and hoping to get it up and keep going. And... It's gonna die. Well, it's going to go into the net. Yeah, I should say it's gonna die. <laughs> but look how off balance she is there. Yeah, but look at her her knees here. Her back knee is lower than her front knee. Her her I think her left knee should be a little bit well, to really should, get into the net. She should be closer to the ball. I mean, she should. That's be right. She should have moved her feet. Let's take a look. I mean, even we're talking six Did, inches. Six inches closer to that ball. She doesn't have to overreach. She ha she'll have a little bit. Oh, see how she's reaching. Now she's yeah, trying to. Yeah, she did move her back feet a little bit. And it just didn't happen. And, and Jim, Jim, serve. It's very, very nonchalant. It's, get it in. It, it just, just, uh, and, uh, it's almost it's like a little flick. It's almost like a little flick. There's, there's yeah, no, yeah. just, just a flick. It's, it's, a, it's a flick. It's a flick, and it's not about hey, how powerful can I put it? I yeah. call it a handshake. It's like here you. Yeah, go. it's a handshake. Here you go. Here you go. Now let's get into this. Oh, that was a great drop. What missed it? No, that was a great duck. Oh, it went out. He okay. hit it right at her, and she ducked, and it went out. So uh, I didn't see that. I'm sorry. Here we got Yvonne serving. Whoops. Let's get back to Yvonne serving. Here she goes. And she, I, she has, I think, one of the lowest serves that I have seen after watching a lot of videos. Right here. See how low? She's low. It's underneath her knee almost. It's but, just so but low. But I like it because it put they just go a few more but look at how she's in ready position. See, she's staying low. This, I love that. Because right. she's right. in a ready position, she's crouched, she's corn I mean she not standing up and going down, standing up. No, no. Low, low is good. Low on pickleball, if you watch the these games in slow motion, you'll see that the low if you can get low, good things happen. Absolutely. Well, that's, I, you know, I come from volleyball and, you know, the most of the play, the exciting play is above the net, but the defensive player is low. And if you're going to play, if you're going to get the ball, you have to be low. And if you're low, you have control of your, yeah. 
your 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 power core, which is your your gut and your trunk. But if you're high, your power source now is up and it's got no generation. But if you're low, you can generate that explosion to the left, forward, up, down, you know, back anywhere any direction. But if you're if you're tall, you can't explode. You just can't explode in different directions. This is match point right here, and it goes, you know, an easy ball to Marsha, and she just um, nonchalant. It's very nonchalant, not really ready for it, and it goes out. That's the game. That's the game. That's it. It's not just not set there. So it it's a it's. A, I mean, we had it down in slow motion here, but I mean, it's going fast and we know it's going fast and easy for me here to sit and say, oh, you got to stay low and ready to go. But um, you have to be, you got to keep that ball in front of you. What I call in the book is it's, it's the, it's the footwork to the dance. Are you there? I'm here. Can you see me? Can you oh, hear there me? You I see your little picture there. Um, it's the footwork to the dance. I mean, you've got to be in ready position. You've got you can't just stand and turn. You gotta you gotta slide. You gotta slide left. You gotta slide right. You gotta keep moving, and and keep everything uh, in in motion. Um, it, it, it's an aerobic activity. I mean, if people think that it's not an aerobic activity. I'm telling you, that, that leg stuff, that leg cramp stuff, I, I've used it. It works. <laughs> oh, I was just going to give a shout out again to uh, Pickleball Channel. Go visit them at pickleballchannel.com on their website. Thank you, Pickleball. And also to um, Highland. Whoops. What's going on here? That, that, that's the commercial. That's a commercial. That's right. I had everything keyed up so that uh, we could see a picture of their product. Now, Highland, and, uh, I think they have stuff. I think some of it is dissolvable, and there's tablets. But um, I, I've used it, and uh, I'll say, yeah, it's done. I've had cramps, and it, it does do something to stop it. So it, it does, it's a great product. So. And uh, let's talk a little bit about your book and about uh, Costa Rica. Uh, okay. Do you happen to have any visuals that you can show us? I have my book here, Pickleball CPR Drill. And it's coaching. The CPR people ask, what is CPR? Coaching Pickleball Readiness. And it's 120-some drills of um, from my teaching method of uh, the uh, PB9 uh, court. I design it back here in the, the back here you can see my my, my P, oops what happened did you did i lose you no i'm here uh, there i am back here i have my pb9 grid it's a teaching grid that i use um for my uh um my teaching method so it's you know hitting and drilling with a purpose make sure that when you hit a ball you're just not hitting it you're having a reason to hit it you have a reason you have placement with that ball so um there's a lot of drills in there and the te the whole teaching method there it is there on my website pickleballcpr.com you can get the book there or you can get it on amazon um and it's a it, it's it's a it's a great, I think it's a great resource. I've had a lot of people complimented on and how they've used, a couple of people have used it in, in their own coaching. And you can come up with more drills by using the, the, the method. Um, and just, I mean, you can, seriously, you can come up with like 300 plus drills on your own by just having a coach in one place and a player in another place and the website itself i tried to put on uh, different tips and tricks and teaching methods um along with that and 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 patreon is my uh blog site and in june you're going to costa rica we are going to costa rica june 5th to the 12th eight days of excitement to visit uh, Celeste and uh, Tony Horpel, who are the ambassadors down there who are doing an amazing job of bringing pickleball to Costa Rica. I was there this past September and they showed me the advent the adventure that we would be going on. And if you look at these pictures here, just right here, Tony's a phenomenal uh, uh, photographer 
and the two of them have put together these wonderful packages and um, they gear it toward the group. So I'm taking between, you know, seven people minimum, probably up to 16 people. And we are going to be four days, four days down in uh, Punta Leona, which is a beautiful resort. It's very lush, very looks like that. There's macaws and parrots and monkeys and, and iguanas. I mean, it's so cool. It's like, oh my God, we are just like walking around a zoo in real life. And uh, it's just such a beautiful country. The people are amazing. Um, the food is good. We're going to be at the beach for four days. And then we will be um, moving back up in, we're flying into San Ramon or San Jose, going down to uh, Punta, Le uh, Point, uh, Punta Leona for four days at the beach resort all-inclusive meals and then going back up to San Ramon to spend some time in the Highlands area where it's a little bit more lush and uh, tropical um, and get a real Costa Rican adventure and I am so excited about it I am ready to like do some winters down there that's how beautiful it is it's just an amazing country and Tony and Celeste um, you can find information on my website I'm gonna be putting a link for um, a registration so we're taking registrations I just booked a flight last night so I'm ready to go uh, so if you're interested in finding out more go to the website find out more and we will get you hooked up and from wherever you are in the country we're all kind of converging either into Atlanta or Miami and then taking off to be in uh, uh, Costa Rica on uh, June 5th so it should be really wonderful I mean the weather there is just phenomenal and just a gorgeous place to be so I invite everybody to come down if they can we're gonna take a small group this time around and hopefully make this maybe an annual thing who knows who knows who knows maybe jack you'll join us so who knows yeah maybe who knows thanks so much claudia for spending a little bit of time with uh, with us today oh, my pleasure as always i really enjoy this hopefully everybody gets out there and don't forget drill because your game will only improve if you practice. Um, so, you know, playing is great and we love to play. So keep playing, make sure you stretch out, drink plenty of fluids and play with your heart and soul. Have a great holiday season and um, enjoy your weather wherever you are in the world. Thank you so much, Jack. This was awesome as always. Thank you. All right. See you later. Bye. Bye-bye.